of La Penta. This is WICR. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Sports Vault. I'm your host with the most, Jersey Joe, tagged along with my partner in crime, Big Shot Rob. Very excited to be here on this wonderful Friday. And, you know, we got to start off with the man of the hour, Rob, Kyrie Irving. Now, if you follow me on Twitter at Sports Vault Iona, you probably kind of know I'm a big Kyrie Irving fan. I mean, the guy has just been sensational. Last night, 57 points, three rebounds, five assists, and four steals. Kyrie was just unreal. I mean, he had it was seven of seven from the three point line, ten of ten from the th- from the free throw line. He hit the game uh, tying three point shot to put it into overtime, and then once it was in that overtime, he was just money. And now, Rob, here's the question: Is you know me, I'm as big a, cat, a LeBron fan as there is, so I've watched him so much during his career. I feel like Kyrie is the best teammate LeBron has ever had. What do you think about that? I would say yes at this moment. I mean, give it the next couple years, Joe, because you know what? Kyrie Irving's only 22 years old. Yeah, he's still insane. young, and he's going to play with LeBron when he hits his prime, Kyrie. Kyrie's going to be hitting his prime while LeBron's coming towards the end of his game. That's why I think he might turn out to be the best player that LeBron's played with. You know, a lot of people throw the argument he played with Dwayne Wade. We look at this when Dwayne Wade and them all formed that big three, the 2010-2011 season. Dwayne Wade played 76 games, and then after that, everything went downhill. We dropped to 49, 69, 54, and it was more, Dwayne Wade was more injury prone. And you're not going to see that with Kyrie in his career because Kyrie's still at that young age. Dwayne Wade was kind of... I, I, I hate to put it that way, but towards the end of his career, because Kryptonite was already done. He had blown out his knees because he played way too many minutes in his career. And now we look at it now, Kyrie is going to be that versatile guy. Kyrie does He passes the ball well. I've really seen an improvement with that. That's one thing I'll give him this year. Really has improved. Gone off a lot. And that's one thing I really didn't expect this year, especially playing alongside LeBron and Kevin Love. Because Kyrie Irving, yeah, you you see him with the Cavaliers the last couple of years. He could put up 40 points. He could put up 30 points. But you see with forming a big three, we saw what happened in Miami when Bosch's numbers went down, Wade went down a little bit, still average about 20 to 21 points. But I think Kyrie Irving is the best player that LeBron is going to end his career with. That It's just an amazing thing to happen, too, in Cleveland. It is. I mean, we saw last night 88 points between the two of them. They are as much of a dynamic duo as there has ever been. And the thing is that I really like looking at Wade and looking at Kyrie. I mean, you nailed it. You hit it on the head. Health is the main reason why I really say Kyrie is because Wade, we did see dramatically. I mean, look, I give him credit because in the NBA Finals, he he fought through the pain. He had the will to win, and he was money in the NBA Finals whenever they needed him. But you look at his kind of body of work, and he missed a lot of games during LeBron's career in Miami. They, there was a lot of times where Wade's health was so up in the air. And Kyrie, that's not something that we've really had to deal with there. And the other thing I look at, Rob, is, and you can comment on this, is mm-hmm. I look at Kyrie's body of work, and I think he's more of a complete basketball player than Dwayne Wade was during his time. Now, Wade is about as good a guy, I mean, attacking, being aggressive, hitting those mid-range shots as there's ever been. But when I look at Kyrie, I think he's got more of a complete offensive game. Now, Dwayne Wade's never really been a really big perimeter scorer. Kyrie, I mean, we've seen it. Seven of for seven from the three-point line. A couple weeks ago, I mean, he hit like 13 of 18 from the three-point line when he scored 55 against Portland. He's such a good player, and he could really score from everywhere. We've seen now he's elevated his defense dramatically. He can facilitate the offense. I really don't think that there's an identifiable hole in Kyrie's game. No, I don't see any holes whatsoever, Joe. He could do anything on the court, and it's something that I— it's really improved since LeBron's come here. Yes. LeBron, I think, really changed him up, really got into his head. Because you know what? This kid, I could say when he first started off in Cleveland, I wasn't that crazy about him. Yeah, he put up amazing numbers. But when you're the top player on your team, you're going to do that. When there's nobody around you, you're going to do that. But now LeBron really elevated it to this point where he could do anything. Dwayne Wade, you know what? He's a heck of a player, Joe. I'll give him that. Dwayne Wade's had an amazing career, amazing basketball player. 06, defeating the Mavericks, really carried his team in that series. But, I mean, he's a guy who is more of attack the rim, scored through the dunk. 
shoot whenever you can. He's not like Kyrie who could really open up his game. Dwayne Wade was more of a scoring type guy. And Kyrie on the offensive end, he's a guy who could rebound the ball. He could pass. And he could shoot. And that's what you need. That's what you really want on a team, especially like Cleveland. When you have two guys like LeBron James and Kyrie Irving who can open up their game to that kind of material, you're going to really succeed. And we're going to see Cleveland succeed this year. We're going to see them in the playoffs. And if they end up playing the Hawks in the Eastern Conference Finals, that game is going seven se- That That series is going seven games. I'm with you. I mean, I just think when you look at it as the body, and it's kind of funny, the parallels between Cleveland and Miami when LeBron was there because it was kind of that dynamic duo in Miami, and then Chris Bosh was a very good third option. I definitely think Chris Bosh was a lot more relevant than we've seen from Kevin Love at this point. But I think totally, I mean, it's very similar the way both teams have kind of gone about things. But Kyrie just has that different level like you just said so well and like we've been talking about here. But let's talk about Kevin Love for a minute because last night was not pretty. It was a great Cavalier win, but Kevin Love's performance certainly was nothing to write home about. Only eight points, and really those eight points were all in the first quarter. Um, I mean, for the main, most part, I'm in that in this game, five rebounds total. Kevin Love has definitely got the most criticism out of everyone, and I think right now Cleveland's found their their rhythm. They have it. I mean, Timothy Mozgov, all these guys are playing so well, but it still seems like Kevin Love is the guy who can't seem to fit in. Is it just not a fit with him on this team, Rob? Yeah, it's definitely not a fit. I didn't expect this, Joe. You know, I'll give you these numbers right now. Love averaged 26 points a game last season, and he dropped to 16. Yes, we expected that drop. If I expected to drop maybe six points to maybe 20, the guy just doesn't fit well into this system. As you said, he comes out hot from the start. That's what a lot of these announcers are saying. You'll see Kevin Love come out and score 10 points in the first quarter, and then he slowly declines and disappears completely from the game. And, I mean, this is a guy who should be working well in this system. I mean, Chris Bosh worked well with Dwayne Wade and LeBron James. Oh, he was excellent. He he changed his game to that point. And have you seen the? That's the one thing is, although Chris Bosh wasn't really as much of an at the basket scorer, he really expanded his game and became such a good perimeter scorer with LeBron and Wade. But Kevin Love, to me, I've seen that go away completely. He's just not hitting those perimeter shots. I don't think he's confident in taking them, and he's certainly not making them when he has to. So I just think I'm with you. I thought at first I was going to give it a little bit of time to kind of work together and gel together. But I think when you just look at it, it's just not a fit. I, sometimes it happens. Sometimes great players just aren't a fit with a specific spot. And I think from Kevin Love, that's really what we've seen. And it makes it interesting because, I mean, the Cavs gave up Andrew Wiggins in the summer to get him. I don't know, I mean, if Kevin is really going to want to be back. And I don't know if, if what we see, if they win an NBA title, it's going to be maybe kind of hard not to bring him back. But I think right now, Kevin's, I don't know if he's happy. I really don't. I mean, also, Joe, we look at it. Yeah, it's his decision at the end of the day if he bolts or if he stays. If you're Cleveland, do you want to sign Kevin Love? Yeah. Do you want to or do you want to look at maybe free agency, try to get a guy like Marcus Sola, or Marcus Aldridge and max out that kind of player? Because those guys are perfect for under the rim, perfect rebounders. Yeah, Kevin Love's young in age. But, I mean, I, I don't want a guy whose numbers are just completely dipping like he has no idea what he's doing. The guy all of a sudden can't hit three-pointers after what I saw in Minnesota. The guy could pull up from anywhere and hit a shot, and now numbers slowly declined. I, I like it. Andrew Wiggins. With that trade, I would have kept Andrew Wiggins. Because it, yeah. up to this point, I, I'm not going to lie, I was a complete hater of Andrew Wiggins going into this season. I did not like him whatsoever in college. I didn't like his game whatsoever. Felt when they lost in the Big Ten and then they got wiped down in the NCAA tournament, I felt that he really never stepped up, showed me what a key player is. But, I mean, we look at it now. His defensive skills are amazing. Kid's scoring maybe 16 to 20 points a night. And now you look at it, that's something that Cleveland could have really worked into their system. You, you could have played the Tristan Thompson and Timothy Mozgov, and this team probably would be on a better roll than where they are right now with Kevin Love. And, you know, it's funny because I was so torn. My heart was torn in this summer because – I, I did want Kevin Love, and I at the end of the day, I thought it was the right move. But I watched every minute of Andrew Wiggins in the summer league, and 
you could just see he was going to be special. You could just kind of see it. His defense was there all along, and you could kind of tell that the offense was a work in progress, but it was coming. And I think I think you hit the nail right on the head. Tristan Thompson is such an athletic type guy like that. Like not the best offensive player, mm-hmm. but he's a guy who lives getting rebounds, timely defensive rebounds. I love Tristan Thompson. Timothy Mozgov has been such a force. I think at the end of the day, and um, I thought Cleveland, there's a chance they might live to regret the Wiggins trade. And it looks like certainly they might because right now Kevin Love has just not worked out. Now the final question of this segment I'll ask you, Rob, is there were some people who would say that Kevin Love's was kind of a product of the Timberwolves being so bad. His numbers were a little bit inflated because of how bad they were. Is Kevin Love an overrated basketball player, or is this just not a fit with the Cavaliers and his talent is kind of being over overshadowed by everything else? You know, I hate to say it this way, but I think, yes, he is overrated completely. I mean, yeah, look at his stats from Minnesota, Joe. The guy scored 20 points a game. He's averaged over 14 rebounds a game. But, I mean, who did he have? He had the point guard in Ricky Rubio. He had Peklovic. He had guys like Kevin Martin, but not that, like, top player that we look at. He's not, he didn't have, like, a Kevin Garnett in his prime. He didn't have, like, a Sam Cassell or a Charles Sprewell in Minnesota like KG did at the time. So at this point, I kind of believe he is overrated. And with Cleveland, you look at his numbers this year, I'd rather sign Carlos Boozer over him because Carlos Boozer is somewhat putting up the same numbers close to his, maybe less on the rebounding side, but close in points per game. And same production, just an older guy. And, I mean, really not working out so well in Cleveland. And I think at this point in his career, he just bolt at this point. Go to... Go to the Lakers. That's what I have to say. Because you know what? That's always the team that he wanted to go to. Go to the Lakers. Go get your legacy over there because Cleveland's not going to work out. Yeah, you might. W- you have the highest chance to win a title this year. I will not count Cleveland out whatsoever. Atlanta's on a roll, but it, there's going to come a point at the end of the year where you're going to see them fall. I'm sorry. Atlanta's not winning it. Yeah, I'm with you. I mean, it's at the end of the day in the NBA, it really is about having that superstar who you can put the hand, the ball in their hands and just go out there and make a play. We saw in the Spurs game last night, that was an NBA Finals atmosphere. And the reason that the Cavaliers won and the reason the Spurs were so competitive is because their definable stars, Tony Parker, put the ball in his hands. Kyrie Irving, when the game is on the line, get him the ball. LeBron James, same thing. When you look at the Hawks, if you're going to have the ball in Jeff Teague's hands, if Al Horford is going to be your best option, look, they're good basketball players, but there's just a difference between having a Kyrie Irving and a LeBron James over a Paul Millsap or a Jeff Teague. I mean, there's a lot of people out there who loves this Hawks story, and I do too. They play great defense. They move the ball well. But in the finals, you need definable stars, and they just don't have any. Is that fair, Rob? Yeah, they don't have the definable stars. They don't have what the what the Cavaliers have, which is superstars. They have mild players who they didn't have to spend that much money on, Joe. They all got them on cheap contracts, and they aren't the players that are going to succeed to an NBA championship. I hate to put it that way. They have a great coach. He's done a terrific job. He has. He did terrific with Popovich as his assistant, and you knew what Atlanta was going to be able to do, what they were going to be capable of doing. But I'm sorry, they don't have the the players for a playoff atmosphere to win it completely. No, I mean, I mean, we're in total agreement here, and I mean, it's a lot of fun because the finals is really going to be here before we know it. I mean, we're only like five weeks away from the NBA playoffs, so the push is very strong. We saw last night, whenever you think the Spurs, you can count them out. You certainly can't because they played really well so far in the second half, but that is going to wind it down. We're going to move into football now, Rob. I know... You must be just waiting to bolt out of your seat to talk about your Jets. And we're going to get there in one minute, so everyone stay with us, and we will be right back. 